Today, I'm gonna to show what I've done to put together a cheap boost leak tester for about 10 or $20 in parts, and show how it's used on our fresh NA plus turbo conversion. This is going to be a quick one, as long as everything goes to plan, because as I'm filming this, I've only just mechanically finished this car, and it's taking all of my self-control to not take it for its first drive around the block right now. Please consider giving this video a like if you enjoy, or if you think I should have just been a man-child, dropped it off the stands and taken it for a lap around the block as it is now. Nope, we don't even have time for the full intro. Let's go to the bench. No one wants to be losing that hard-earned boost, and if you are, you could have all sorts of negative effects like losing power, response, and spool speed, and it may even affect drivability and idle, depending on where the leak is. Here's what I've got to make our DIY leak tester. There's a PVC cap from Bunnings or any hardware store with a joiner and two hose clamps sized to suit your turbo compressor inlet or reuse the ones off the car. I'll be using a 75 millimeter cap and three inch or 76 millimeter joiner should be the same for all stock size barra turbos. I've got one of these clamp in type tire valves from eBay, so it can be reused on different size caps. A normal valve, a straight compressor fitting, or even an old bike tire valve with some excess rubber and epoxy may also work though. There's a drill and a 10 or 11 millimeter drill bit to suit the tire valve you'll be using. I'll also be using a compressor and a tire inflator attachment. If you're really keen though, and don't have your own, you could try the one at your local servo maybe. Even more advanced systems will use smoke machines or some jerry-rigging to inject smoke with the compressed air to make leaks super visible. Being a hack, I instead have a spray bottle with a mix of water and dishwashing liquid to help find those. This is my first time doing this, but the process looks pretty simple, so let's have a go. First up, I've drilled a hole in the blank cap to suit our valve seals and without drilling a hole in my hand. Just. Yes, I did deliberately drill nowhere near the sensor this time as there's raised writing there that may affect the sealing. The clamp on valve stem is then taken apart, inserted and tightened in the hole of the PVC cap. This has rubber rings to create a seal so I can move it to any size cap and use it again in the future. The intake piping is removed from the front of the turbo compressor and placed out of the way for now. Our cap has been fit flush into the joiner to help stop this flying off under pressure and can then replace the intake piping on the front of the turbo with the hose clamps nice and tight. Depending on your situation, you may also want another one of these caps as a blank to isolate different sections to test, say just up to the intercooler or to the throttle body. I haven't done this because I'm hoping to test the whole system, but this does have a drawback. Without getting too technical, we are pretty much guaranteed to have a leak with air still getting past the throttle body and into the cylinders because odds are an intake valve will be open or partially open. And depending on the engine and cam specs, you may have an exhaust valve open as well, letting some pressure straight out the exhaust or a little may even pass the piston rings and into the crankcase. I don't wanna to go too crazy trying to stop this. The effect should be somewhat limited as long as we can build pressure in the system and we're mindful to ignore noises related to that, such as straight out the exhaust or the PCV valve venting into the intake. You could also remove the oil cap if you wanna be overly cautious of the pressure in the crankcase. Another caution is to not overpressurize the system, but make sure to check the range of boost you'll be running on the car. This car is currently set up for seven PSI, so we'll start by setting the compressor outlet pressure to roughly this, and check it a little higher just to be sure. The tire pressure gauge I'm using can also give a more accurate reading, but does not set this pressure. You may want to jam the trigger for the tire gauge on with a cable tie while you run around looking for leaks. With some pressure now added, we can listen for those. We may have a small amount of compressor and other air noises that we've talked about already, but a small leak may sound more like a whistle or hissing with a higher pitch. You're looking for leaks anywhere in the intake system, from the obvious cooler piping joints to all sorts of things like throttle body to intake and intake to cylinder head, any map sensors and vacuum lines, turbo compressor housings, 
blow off valves, etc. Immediately I can hear a leak and poking around it becomes pretty clear where it's coming from by wiggling this vacuum hose. Seems there's a tiny hole in this line to the fuel regulator, but fortunately it's only short and easy to replace. As well as listening, we can use our spray bottle and soapy water on any suspect areas or on each of these joins if you're being super thorough. This is made much easier by having the front bar off for this, hence why I've done it now when we have the best access. This car has had its kit off to show its front so much at the moment that a local guy in a trench coat is starting to blush, so I'm hoping to leave it back on for a while after this. I found no other leaks, but as a demonstration, here's what one could look like with our soapy water helping to find it. I had expected to find at least one of these to be fair, maybe I got lucky this time, or I just haven't found them yet. Push the coupler back on fully, tighten that clamp down and something like this should be quickly and easily sorted. So that's our cheapo boost leak tester and how to use it. I'm no expert but that all seemed to work pretty well, I hope that's helped some of you out. It's not a perfect replacement for actual driving conditions and won't move nearly as much air obviously. So the real test of hoses blowing off will be driving it. But it's a good test and just as well we did it because that vacuum leak or boost leak for the fuel regulator could have really caused some serious issues. With that done, I can finish putting this back together and go for our first test drive with this NA plus T conversion. Even though at the time of recording this, I don't know how that went. If you've been watching along, you've already seen that in the last video that's already out. I hate time travel. If you haven't seen that, consider going back to watch it. I think I'm doing this YouTube thing wrong. I should probably promote you to subscribe to catch the next video instead. So do that if you want to see the boost and wideband AFR gauge install that we have coming up. Or not. I don't blame you. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed that and hope to catch you all in the next one. Cheers.